Aloha, eh? Well then, you need to talk to my colleague inside. The dwarf stands straight and tall, or at least, as tall as a dwarf can manage. I'm a member of Her Majesty Queen Justinia's Royal Regiment. Special Officer, Rank 1, ma'am. I'm not at liberty to discuss that, ma'am. Through his visor, you can only see his eyes. But there's something in them that belies the steely exterior. The guard's breath catches. He squeezes his eyes shut, blinking away the pain. When he speaks, it's in a low whisper. Please, stop talking, please. This is the wedding day of the daughter of the Merchant Ross. Her Royal Highness Justinia, the breath and balm of Duna, detailed us to protect the guests. He winces, the pain evident. We failed. I'm told Justinia is safe. Thank the God. But whether she's inside after all the commotion, I can't say. I pray Ross found her a suitable hiding place. The whole kingdom could have been lost in the void woken there and then. Much good it does now that they're gone. Now, the store is open. Do your business and be on your way. They got damaged. Should, uh, should do a stop take and maybe tidy the shelves. Oh, oh, I didn't see you there. Sorry, it's been um, quite a day. You need a hand with anything? Let me know. The wedding? Oh, Duna, haven't you heard? Uh, I'm so sorry, there's, there's been a tragedy. You can head into the garden to see for yourself, if you've the stomach for it. Not sure how much longer I'll be here, but if you've a need of supplies, let me know. He rubs his jaw in thought and gives you a long look. Loa, eh? The boss has been getting messages from dwarves all over, but that is an interesting one. He's not exactly everyone's favourite dwarf. Void woken at a wedding. If that ain't a bad omen, nothing is. But uh, talk to the guard at the door. I really shouldn't say any more. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Everything we have is on the shelves. Oh, all right, you can have a look. I'm not planning on sticking around. So what difference does it make? Bloody void woken at a wedding. If that ain't a bad omen, nothing is. Nothing sacred anymore. All safe. Nothing sacred anymore. All safe. I'm lucky I was posted indoors. That I'd be drawing breath now if I was in the garden. First wedding I've missed in days. You and me both. Worked for Ross for a decade, and half expected an invitation of my own. But even with half of Ark lying dead in his garden, he still wants the shop open. Then again, if I'd been at the wedding... Whew. 
The fact that the boss loves counting his pennies is probably the only reason I'm breathing. That said, it doesn't feel right to be orking wares with that next door. Job's the job, though. Can I do leave arcs with naught but empty pockets? Oh, don't know much. Everyone was out in the garden for the wedding. I was watching the shop and then... Guards were everywhere, but those beasties just cut through them like butter. Boss said to keep the doors open, but... But truth be told, I feel ill just standing here. By Duna, closing can't come fast enough. Take care of yourself. I was hired to guard a wedding. Nobody said anything about fighting monsters. Wedding party, no entry. Are you? Well, I've got bad news for you then. There's been a tragedy. You better be on your way. We've... We've had enough trouble for one day. She looks you up and down. Didn't we cook you out for being too poor to be drunk? Unsmiling, she kicks the door open. My advice? Stay away from the wine. Party's over in there anyway. People have died. Party's over if that ain't obvious. Best go home. He looks you up and down. The sooner the better. He takes a deep breath, then lets it out again, slowly. Out in the garden. Beautiful sight. Till the Void Woken showed up. It... It was a goddamn bloodbath! Void Woken, here! And who'll clean up that mess in the garden? It'll be me, the new guy. Gods, I am so sorry. How could I have known? She looks up at you with glassy eyes, wiping her tear-streaked face on one brocade sleeve. A girl's wedding should be the happiest day of her life. I don't know how this could happen. Who would have seen it coming? She looks down at her feet, seeing her blood-spattered wedding slippers. Her face crumples and tears spring from her eyes. I should be so happy. Everybody should be so happy. But before we could even cut our wedding cake, there were void woken everywhere. We barely made it indoors alive. But not everyone was so lucky. I, I can hardly bear to think of them. Their wives and husbands and children back in the kingdom. Left to grieve alone. What are you insinuating? We're merchants, not mystics. You should have seen those void monsters. All that blood, all that... 
death. They didn't deserve... We didn't. She buries her head in her hands, sobbing uncontrollably. Milady, I beg your pardon, but the feast has been cut short due to, uh, acts of gods. I'd be drawing breath now if I was in the garden. The woman cries on. The dwarf stares grimly into space. Rings adorn his fingers, some of which glitter with ornate rose-tinted jewels. You notice one has a... If you'll excuse me, I'd just as soon be left with my thoughts. I bet you heard. I bet everyone is talking about this cursed wedding. Perhaps my war horse of an aunt is right. Perhaps this is what I get for debasing myself. Still, what's done is done. The marriage is final. That's the important thing. Yes, it's been a horrendous day. Still, it's a fine match. With her assets and my name, I, that is to say, we, will be a force to be reckoned with. He glances over at his distraught bride as she takes another sip from her goblet. Events like today's do have a way of putting things in perspective. There's much to be gained from this alliance. It survived the Void Woken after all. Out with the old, in with the new, I suppose. Yet, <laughs> old man Ross left the incident quite unharmed. Love? Do this weird. Is that what passes for sense among the lower classes? Well, she's quite enamored with me, of course. I can be, well, irresistible. But no. In my family, marriage is a more practical matter. Our union means I can continue my work. A job? Oh, please don't be churlish. I'm no dairy maid desperate for her next meal. I follow my passion. Alchemy. Potions which, at a sip, can heal or kill. Can grant strength speed or compliance which have the power to transform base metal into gold he glances across the room where his betrothed is pouring herself another goblet of wine yes indeed our union will definitely be of value even with today's rather dark start And how dare you judge me for my actions? What I do here today ensures the survival of my house. It ensures the survival of my work. And I would not give a dog's bark for your opinions. Now leave me be. I would choose the Void Woken over this company.
he's mine. Get in my way and you'll get an elbow in the eye. The spirit of a dwarven lady stands eagerly by, as if she's waiting to catch a bouquet. The spirit shoos you away absently, her gaze fixed intently on the arc that the bouquet is taking through the air. Come on, the spirit of an elegantly dressed woman glances around, seemingly more interested in the other guests than in the unfolding ceremony. The spirit of a dwarf watches the ceremony with a scowl. He tugs at his ornate collar in an effort to loosen it. The spirit of a dwarven lady remains wrapped by the since-interrupted wedding ceremony. She dabs away some tears with a handkerchief. Come on, throw it! This the spirit of a guard gazes around the garden sternly. Clearly, he's unaware of his demise. And they look hostile. Time to play. Glory is mine. Happening out here. Haven't we seen enough tragedy today? I'm not in charge of health and safety. Wait, toys? He considers the wreckage surrounding the X cake. Understanding dawns. That cake, it came from the doctor with a letter of congratulation. It was truly a magnificent sight. But the wedding was cut short before we could even slice it. Void woken, sabotage, bad cake. You'd think someone had it in for our little lady. Few have seen his face, and no one knows his name. He corresponds only by messenger. The townspeople seldom speak of him. Which is strange now that I think of it. He'll open your belly and fill it with jelly. The doctor is in, the doctor is in. He'll rip off your toes and shove them up your nose. The doctor is in, the doctor is in. Heard a kid singing that the other day. Her mother heard it too and beat the poor tyke senseless. <laughs> that was funny, I have to admit. Gotta take your entertainment where you can when you're on duty. There is little to tell. He's just the doctor. He speaks to few, and few wish to speak of him unless they're desperate. No one even knows his name. It's easiest if I show you. Let me see your map. He shakes his head and whistles as he identifies the doctor's home on your map. If there was ever a house that was haunted, well, that's the one. They say almost no one gets in, and those who do never come out. Perhaps he feeds them cake, hmm? The shadowed house on the eastern cliff. Don't expect a warm welcome. And watch out for the cake. Can't say I blame you. I don't want to appear disloyal. But as dwarfen weddings go, this one had a tad more blood than usual. A tad.
The spirit of an elven dignitary remains seated in a pew where the wedding unfolded. He stifles a disinterested yawn. The spirit of a dwarven attendee attempts to discreetly sip from a goblet of spectral wine he stashed beneath him. The spirit of a dwarf guard patrols the garden, oblivious to the fact that he's dead. back. You want access to the full range? Let me know. Take care of yourself. The store's open. Do your shopping. The guard curtly nods. The guard shifts uncomfortably. He swallows, his mouth apparently dry. When he speaks, it's with... Not my place to say a word, friend. Not my place at all. Oh, please. They kicked me out. Don't they know who I am? No one going nowhere, as far as you're concerned. Now clear off, you're in the way. Good. Now clear... What's this? I found something.
A guard rushes in front of you, and before you can flinch, the point of a sharp spear touches the underside of your jaw. It would draw blood if you had blood to draw. Halt! State your name! Now! Go oh, for goodness sake, woman, lower your spear. That is no way to greet a guest. Isbeel, I've not known you to be so welcoming to strangers. Have I yet to disappoint your highness in matters of security? Your Majesty? Do as she says. Lower your spear. Yes. Of course, my queen. One we are most certainly. I'm with your highness. Bloom of Duna Plague. Queen Justinia sucks in her cheeks, then offers you her unwavering hand. The woman called Isbel glares at you with stony face and obdurate eyes. You are in the presence of a royalty. Let's not in My queen. The queen. Many have laid claim to Lucian's legacy, including his own inferior spawn. I presume our visitor has more than a vague t She has a A refugee from the jaw? Yes, the mad sorcerer tainted. The Isbel re The god woke. The queen's eyes grow wide, and she nods appreciative. It is good and right that the god woke. Indeed. Slayed by your hand, then. The Kabul. The Queen's. The Great. I do not know of this Riker. I trust basic decency. Ah, Venner. So you eliminated the Butcher response. My Queen. Is Bale's hot. Splendid. I've no more. Well, I see. Is Beal, whatever's. Your Majesty. The God Woken is no ally, but enemy. She would throw your plans in disarray. You have worked so hard. Ox must. All to the death fog. What? Nonsense. It cannot be. Oh, but you're a clever one, God Woken, aren't you? Fine. <laughs> You've outed me. But it doesn't matter. You can't stop the death fog. The wheels are in motion. Isbeel? Shut your royal maw, Justinia. Arcs will fall and your memory writ. They will believe it was your will, your plan, your command. For a moment, Isbel appears almost relaxed. Her eyes flash blue, her face quivers. Isbel? My queen, forgive me, I... I... Isbel screams in pain and clutches her head. She bobs and sways, muttering indecipherable words under her breath. yourself awake to the cold gaze of a thousand stones and the hot gaze of the dwarf Isbel, right hand of the queen. Oh good, you're awake. Yeah, at first I figured I'd just kill you, but then I thought, Isbel, <laughs> you're wasting an opportunity here. Don't bother thanking me just yet though, I dare say you'll be begging to die before long. <laughs> I'll start with less toxins, just to see how you react and take it from there. How strong a dose can a god woken handle? How long does it take for one to succumb? <laughs> so many questions. Your lips open, but no words spill forth. You try to lift your head, but it is no match for grab- Ah, uh ah, -uh, don't f- Oh, but I've been so rude. Oh, it's good to give myself a rest. Those masks can be darned pesky. Good. Make yourself go. Ah, that dose. 
this proves quite alarming for my normal subject. Let's try a new approach, shall we? The attempt is futile. Every inch of your body is useless, though your senses still register every sight, sound, and smell. Let's see now. Oh, I have just the thing. Just a spritz, mind you. You struggle to move, and you feel your toes wiggle, and your fingers twitch. The paralysis is waning. Interesting. Some of the results are quite unexpected. Now, let's move on to Death Fog. Live or die, you've already proven most... Well, I was going to say useful, but perhaps entertaining is the better word. Isbel turns the van, but no fog wafts forth. In that moment, you feel your bones and muscles awaken. You've regained control of your body at last. What's wrong with it? Come! Pagan Woke is broken free of my spell!
machine sits before you. Pipework tentacles outwards and upwards, the conduits piercing the ground overhead, wending their way towards the city and her people above. Even through the seals of the great system, you scent the acrid sting of the death fog inside. A faint gossamer of death fog rises from a junction where the release valve meets a pipe. A switch allows redirection to a different pipe labeled C. The junction currently leads to a pipe labeled Arx. That other pipe leads to the sea. Redirect the flow. It will minimize the harm. The only way to keep Ark safe is to smash this thing to pieces. Do it. Redirect the death fog. Better to poison the fishes than to poison the people. The machine creeps to life and the death fog begins to flow through the other pipe. You hear the howl of the fog as it travels the pipe towards the sea and the machine winds down. The system is empty. All is silent. In my death. I faced the grave before, you know. Yet through the God King, I have eternal life. The Master's purpose is his own to speak, not mine. You're good with words, so sincere. I almost believed you. But let's pretend I fell for your little persuasion game. I'll tell you the Black Ring's plans on one condition. You release the Death Fog. You bring my mission to an end. Oh, you promise, huh? <laughs> well, a simple yes would have sufficed. If you fail to do as you say, it won't be my wrath you face, but his. The God King feeds on war, on death, on disease. On the rich source the living ones carried within them, knowingly or not. I think this clear by now. The Death Fog was not just a murder bomb, but a tool. A tool for sowing discord. A tool for pitting the Order against the Dwarven Kingdom. A tool for ridding us of those who would see us fail. Every race, every creed, and every claimant to the title of divine. Isbel's voice rises, and her fists tighten. You presume she'd have gone red with fury, were she not wholly translucent. I lived for that day, God Woken. The flesh of every magister melted like butter in the sun. The paladin's eyes bugged out in horror as they watched their spouses and children choke on the death fog, clogging their lungs. There would be screams first. Then silence. The spirit's eyes and mouth narrow. In her silence, the noise of splashing sewer water bounces from the stony walls and into your ears. You have lit Isbel's fire. She is a bomb, a banshee, an erupting volcano. You couldn't know! You weren't there! When the portal opened and the death fog poured in, you weren't there! To see their skin burst, to see the blood bubbles foam from their mouths. Have you ever felt your own saliva sizzle? Have you ever felt your own brain pressing against the inside of your skull? I have. I have felt it. That agony was the doing of the divine. For his order to suffer the same fate is not punishment enough. In death, I was... I was given a chance. I made a decision. One that I have... Never regretted. It is time then. Time to face him. I am ready for his gift and his sanction.
What's this? I found something. I've spotted something. That sounds like the Queen. enough to deal with these turncoats. She motions to the fallen guards littering the walkway. It's an impressive number of bodies. By whose hand? Yours? It should have been my own axe to slice her neck. Take me to her bones. I've a mind to chop them into pieces, the foul witch! Justinia struggles to control her rage. She closes her eyes. She breathes the sewer's fetid air. She waits. She is dead. And that is that. Justinia pounds a fist against her palm. One smack, then a second, then a third. You may not believe me, but... What I did, I thought I did for the sake of my people. The sinking of the Peacemaker, the Driftwood smuggling operation, the Death Fog, Black Peak Isle. Power always comes at a great cost. Sometimes. Sometimes you have to take some lives to save others. And I shall always put Dwarven lives first. You must understand this. It was only a matter of time, she said. And I never doubted it. The scouts talked of living weapons nailed to crosses, of blank-faced wizards, an entire force of them. If we didn't come for the Order, the Magisters and Paladins, they would come for us. They had my ear all the while, the Black Ring. I'm sorry. Truly sorry. To think of it. The Void closes in, then. It's so much more dangerous than even Death Fog. Death Fog we can see and smell. The Void is empty, intangible. We don't know it's there until its creatures are upon us. She was a scientist of sorts, or so the town criers chanted. She knew of the ways of nature and beyond, and I invited her to court to show me. She healed the sick and soothed the wounded. I saw it with my own eyes. I brought her close. Her words were wise and her aims, well, they seem so pure. It was after Alexander assembled the quorum that Isbeel turned my mind to thoughts of war. Our scouts and spies aided dwarven sorcerers where and when they could, but Isbeel insisted the monks and shriekers would touch dwarven land. When we came to Arx to prepare, she rarely left my side except to tend to her laboratory. I'd no idea what... what atrocities she'd been committing there. 
Kem? Linda Kem? This rot has infected the very soil we tread and the air we breathe. I must not let it reach the kingdom. Lady Kem is known to harbor those in need from foreign lands. I will be safe at our estate. So unless you've no more grievances to air. How many innocent lives will die before you see reason? Kill her! Only a coward or an imbecile would invite Ispiel into her court. Either way, she deserves to die. What's done is done. Murdering Justinia now solves nothing. <laughs>